So welcome on board. So let's have a discussion over extract, transform and load different kind of data conversion scenarios, which we have rebuilt inside the French platform. When we discuss about different kind of point to point integrations, such as operative system integrations, including ERP, CRM. Most of these platforms include database structures where we have data. That data needs to be converted into another format and it needs to be sent it through point to point channel to another system. So it basically means that point to point integrations have the both, both capabilities like protocol level information and data payloads, which will be transferred through the protocol channel. So these data payloads are something which we need to look a little bit more deeper into. What does an ETL actually means? It stands for extraction or parsing of the incoming data, adding in logic or activities to transfer the data and finally loading or sending that data into a target system or an interface. So the ETL process contains a lot of different kind of phases where the data transform happens. Different kind of formats such as XML or JSON and binary protocols included. So what triggers the actual uh, process inside the friends? For example, we can read information from a file system, different kind of directory structures. We can stream data inside of different kind of asynchronous messaging queues. We can utilize FTP, SFTP, HTTP, APIs, or have a conditional triggers. That actually means that we can have different kind of ways of starting the process. While we start the process, for example, if we want to read a CSV file, we can pull the directory structure inside the friends platform. So we have a staging area where we have different kind of business related data available. That data might be CSV file. In the process phases, we read the data content inside the actual processing engine. So the first step is that let's read the file from a directory structure or let's read the file from FTP. After having the file on board inside the memory, we start parsing the CSV files. After that, we can split the CSV into a rows so we know what kind of structure it is and what we can do for that. So the next step is to mani manipulate and transfer the data in French service tasks like convert the CSV into XML, JSON or fixed tweet content or EDI fact messages or even the modern JSON. So what you can do after you read the file and read the file content, you have the CSV rows in the memory. You can go loop. You can look each row in a specific moment of time. What you're going to do is that each of those rows are going to be transferred to XML. And then we are going to serialize them to EDI fact. And after that, we can persist that information to another subsystem. So we can load the information into a subsystem or a data warehouse or a long time storage. That can be then applied, for example, for reporting services or reporting purposes. What kind of uh, capabilities do we have inside the platform? Out from the box functionality, we are capable of transforming information from XML, JSON, CSV, fixed width, flat files, custom text formats or EDI facts. Here, here you can see different kind of platform independent uh, messaging formats below. So you can see that we have JSON, JSON example, XML examples, EDI and flat file examples. All of these can be processed through French process engine. So what it actually means that when we read the data, it can be coming out from APIs, HTTP level information, different kind of 
files inside the directory structures over FTP, you name it. So we have huge amount of different kind of protocol connectors, how to read the data. In these examples, we read the data from directory structure from a staging area inside into the platform memory. So the data content can be different from JSON to flat files or from XML to EDI facts. Here you can see an extract, transform and load PPMN 2.0 process built by friends. You can see the first step, we have a trigger where there is a new order created, D96. We're going to read that information into an EDFact file and make parse incoming the file content. So that is the extract phase. Now we are going to review the, uh, the content for the file. So we are going to check for errors and in, inside the parsing, we are having an error handling. If there's an issue found, we will send the information by using modern SMS service. After that, when we have validated the messages, we will have a transform of EDI fact to JSON message. And finally, we are going to load that information uh, into a partner web service. And then the process is finalized. Each of the, these steps have a service task on board. That actually means that each of these elements have a huge amount of code from hundreds to thousands of, of rows. These different, different components, these service tasks, which you can see here, uh, have been created in a way that, that they are reusable. So each of these contents will be configured accordingly. So you need to define which file from which directory system, what kind of header information, uh, what kind of validation there needs to be done, <clears throat> what kind of transforming, uh, transforming uh, triggers there exist, what kind of backend system it is. So you need to define all of the phases. In our case with friends, after extract phase, we always generate JSON. It's a modern language and modern format. So in this example, you can see that we are creating a CSV file and parse the information into JSON. After that, we are going to loop for each CSV row, which is presented as, as a JSON inside the platform. We will transform the information and insert, insert information into a database. So for each found row, we are going to insert the information into a database. On the right side, you can see a configuration of the service that task called transform and insert CSV row to DB. Inside there, you can see the query where you have the uh, insert clause, you have the table, you have the parameters, and then you have the actual values. And finally, you have the connection stream. So low code approach compiles and transforms the load phases into a single step, so it's easy to use. You have the complete, complete visibility into the processing and every step taken. You can see what happens on each step. You have uh, monitoring capabilities inside the platform. So what, what happens in each parsing phase? How is the data manipulated? What is going to be the next step? And you have the full transparency over the process. You can also add that some uh, coding with, with C-sharp inside the process if you need. Here you can see that we are able to also make transformation by using XSLT or JSON map. So what it actually means in this example, when the new CSV file is created in the directory system, we will read the information 
we will convert the information into a CSV file and transfer that into XML. After that, we are going to apply some XSLT transformation. Finally, we will write the information into a file. So let's now see what's inside the demo. So here you can see the French control pane, and we have an example process available for you. So we have a manual trigger. We have a CSV file content. You can see the actual content here. We could have also a direct, direct um, connection inside into a staging area with a file task. Now we imitate that with an expression. So you can see here the actual content from a file. What we're going to do next is to have the parsing. So we are going to define which is the delimiter. So if you look here, you can see the del delimiter defined. And then we are going to inform that what are the columns the column specifications. In this case, we are just having alphabets. So the next step is to split CSV into rows. So what, what we are going to tell to the actual task that we are going to read the information from a previous result, which was called the parse CSV file. So in the first phase, we initialize the information, we read the data from a directory structure. We parse the information using the header information and column specification with a delimiter. After that, we are going to inform that we want to transfer that information into XML. The next step is to go loop for each CSV row. In this case, you can see that we have an XML defined, and, and there's an XSLT, which transform, transforms the data, which is previously coming from a CSV file. After that, after we make the XSLT transformation, we are going to serialize the information into an EDI fact to another message transform. And final, finally, we are going to have information called from serialized to EDF fact. We are going to attach some header information into an EDI file. So we have now created from CSV file, transfer through XML, make an XSLT transformation, and finally, writing the information into an EDI fact, EDI fact file. So let's, let's see how it works. So let's, let's run it once. And let's go see what happened. So here you can see the process monitoring phase. You can see that there has been several, several uh, process runs during during the um, morning, morning time. And you can see here the different kind of different uh, different timestamps when it was run. So now let's see the final run. What happened during the transformation? So we started during during the time. We have the CSV file in inside the memory. The next step is to parse the information. Next step is to have the split CSV rows into XML, French XML. You can see that we have done the transformation here based on the header information, which was previously um, redefined in the parse CSV phase. Next step is let's loop all of the information what we have on board. 
and let's start the processing. So here you can see the XML transformation happening. So we have the values. And then we have the actual headers. And attributes. So these these columns inside in XML. Can be transferred by using. XSLD. The next step is to serialize that information into EDI fact. And finally, we are going to add some header information into an EDI file. And finally, we are uh, end inside of the process. So with friends, you are able to see the full full transparency. What happened during the process? What kind of what kind of phases there were, exist? What were the steps? What were the steps attributes parameters? And, and the end result. After that, we are able to loop all of the relevant information inside of the rows and, and make modifications inside each of the each of the entities which we have inside the memory. So this was a manual trigger. You can also add scheduled windows when to run this kind of information, when to read the information from the file system. Uh, you have the streaming capabilities. To have a messaging queues, API interfaces, REST APIs, and you have also the HTTP and FTP available. <laughs>